here. She is here for two weeks, uh, training parents and like health professional teachers also. We had a previous conference for the mobilization, and now she is eight, ten children a day with the uh, touch with the mobilization, which is really pleasing the progress and changes in the children. And her one of the area is uh, with the infant assessment, and where uh, she has found out the mission of uh, assessing the baby at the early will make the difference in how we can dress for the baby, right? Yes, yeah. Anytime there's any questions during this, please feel free. I'm actually yes, going to please. start. I'm out of living in the middle of the summer. If parents can come. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, how oh, oh. oh, the Sure, change One of the things that's meant to happen for, for an infant is the natural childbirth. Uh, not so much because of the lack of medical intervention, but because of the, the torque that's meant to happen. Um, I've deducted that the, for a baby to move, they need momentum, velocity, and torque, that twist. That torque um, stimulates how a baby is going to start learning from movement. And that's what a baby does. They learn from movement. They don't learn any other way. The intellect does not happen if the movement doesn't happen. So when you have a child that's a premature, obviously your job is to stabilize the medical necessities. Uh, there's been some research on the kangaroo uh, but if you take the kangaroo and what I'm about to show you with the assessment of, of the light twist in the system, because all of you can do that, you can just feel what it's like to twist, um, to stimulate the baby, even while sleeping, will, will totally change the way that baby starts to process movement. And it will lessen, if not eliminate, a lot of developmental delays. Even in genetic conditions or, or, or situations of severe birth trauma, um, uh, I'm like right now working on a 21-year-old with CP with improvements and gains in, in her mobility skills. So it doesn't matter at what age that you start processing that, uh, but to, to come and assess a child for movement. So now even though um, this little guy is swaddled, I'm just going to come underneath the shoulder area. And this is just the first part is just for the assessment. So I'm going to do a light lift and bring back. And now, and that light lift is just to see, again, just take notice. Is a child startling? Is the head movement, you can see his head is actually quite free. So see how this head stays in position as I bring the shoulder up just a little bit? Um, even though he's swaddled again, is there startle? But the main thing also just to, to, to notice if the child has any kind of stiffness. However you want to articulate what stiff means to you, and now I'm just going to come down right to where his pelvis would be. And the same thing, it's a gentle lift. Now that is telling me a lot already. Do you see how when I lift the pelvis, there's not as much movement as I'm seeing here through the shoulder. You see how the shoulder, there's more movement? I'm getting a little bit less movement here. Now already, now he's starting to respond. This is what I'm looking for. Even if the, this is just done at birth to assess the child, because what a child needs to do is just to be able to react to the stimuli and the movements. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to bring up his foot just a little bit. Same thing. Just seeing if the pelvis continues that now there he goes very nice. So if I'm lifting up the foot, do you see how the rotation of the pelvis? And now I'm just going to come back up here again to the, to the uh, shoulder and see if that got any different from him. And notice he's still sleeping, there's no, I'm not using any kind of force. I can go around with you and, and show you the touch. The touch is so gentle. So now I'm going to go around just to the other side. So same thing, and I'm just going to see if there's, again, I make a comparison. Mm -hmm. So now the shoulder is much more difficult to lift. And on this side. And then I'm going to come underneath the pelvis. 
Now the pelvis, see, has much more rotation on this side. And then again, take this, his, his foot and just see it just lifting the feet. But notice I'm not going just up down with the feet. When I do this, I'm rotating the baby. Because when he naturally, if not a normal child or a typical child, if, if there's a stimuli over here, the left foot goes in, there's a counterbalance. So now this depends on if you're comfortable. Again, it's a very gentle. You can do the same thing. Just come underneath his head. And again, I'm just sliding underneath the head. And I'm just seeing how he lifts from one side to the other. My lift is, 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 is barely this. The thing is about a baby is they should respond very gently, easily. This is a really good sign how you can predetermine if there's any kind of um, torticollis that's either happening in the system. But again, notice how it's a twist. So I'm lifting up through the right and lifting up through the, the left. But that twist is stimulating his central nervous system. And now you're gonna see how he'll respond. So I'm gonna go back again to this side. And now this is something more maybe Smith's, uh, but or if you wanna continue. So, so now his shoulder, what I'm gonna do here is just come in, very similar to a kangaroo or a joey hold, but I'm gonna twist. When babies have IVs, the weight of the IVs, pulse socks, all of that is going to interfere with the counterbalance and how they react to stimuli. Do you see how? Now if I wanted to, if I couldn't get to this side, I could very easily now go from the left. So it doesn't always have to be in the direction. This is why nursing is so important and the difference between a nursed baby and a formula fed baby. Because when you're nursing that baby torques or twists around the mother. When you've got a formula fed NG tube uh, uh, situation, there's no crossing midline. There's no stimuli or stresses to the, to the organs. So that's why breathing function is lessened with formula fed babies. So now let's say he has to be formula fed ba baby. That's not saying that that's wrong, but then what you need to do is make sure he's getting, see how he would be coming to feeding right here. Almost like I'd be lifting his head and twisting him. It's a very gentle, and again, you can see his breathing, everything. He's just going for a ride. And this is what a baby should, should naturally do. So this is really soothing for a baby that's having issues with startle teaching him how to lay down better, see how, how he's, he's countering through the pelvis. And now he's just naturally just moving more. Now I can do the same thing underneath here, coming underneath the, his little bum, his pelvis. And same thing, I can just, I'm securing his whole system, it's just like a dance. The right hand is not moving any more than my left hand. And this is a really nice thing to even just teach parents. A lot of parents have bonding issues with the child. Um, they don't know what to do. They're just lying there. They're sleeping or eating. Now what? It's also something very nice. Maybe this child can't be held yet. So you can still have a very nice bonding even in the ICU or the NICU in the... the where they're, they're restricted, there still can be a nice little movement and feel like your, your child's actually responding to your stimuli, which he is. And see, I'm just, just a light rotation through his pelvis. Because his movement, because to keep him healthy is very restrictive. Even with, the, you know, a wrapped him, he's all stabilized. But to keep a child and infant in this position for a long time uh, really um, slows down the central nervous system. 
So this just allows that movement to happen in a very safe environment. Does anybody have any questions? And I'm sure a lot of you just probably do it naturally. So now I can go back and just reassess if I want to, again, just to see if I, you know, and just now look at the difference in his chest cavity. And come down underneath his pelvis. Now look at how much. Again, just a response, how much more he can, now coming up with his leg and just see, I mean, I can just really lift him with a much more, and see, he's just, just reacting. He's just doing what a baby should be doing. But if you, if you really keep in mind the, the function of the twist with the infant versus, again, just lifting up and down or laying the child. If the child is laying on you in a joey hole, if you, all you teach the parent to do is to stimulate and do the same thing that I'm doing here through the back. Because, because that's walking, that's a pre-crawl. All of that, that counterbalance goes on into later developmental movements. That again, when he's lying on his back because of SIDS and all the things that we're doing for the child, but it's restricting the pelvis, or it can restrict the pelvis. Again, if he has a nice, healthy nervous system, none of this matters. But the problem is, is catching the child, or the importance is, is catching the child before all this happens. So now let's just say, or if this child just again has to be here much longer, the more he lies here, the lung function changes from normal function. But see right there is just a nurse hole. I'm just twisting through the chest cavity, lifting up through the pelvis. And see how the head's free, it stays in center. Now again, if he had more issues with torticollis, you'd see where the head needed to come with the spine. Does that make sense to everybody? If I'm just here, it's a twist, I'm holding, I'm just allowing him to breathe with a little bit of a stress. And again, if he was, again, nursing, then he's going to have those stresses on the organ. It's a healthy stress. That's what they needed to develop to get the lungs strong, the heart strong. That's why you have a higher rate of constipation with formula-fed babies. A lot of it, people think it's because it's artificial versus a mother's natural milk, but I really think it's because of the lack of movement that's introduced. If you're just eating like this and laying here, how, how do you go to the bathroom? Versus, I mean, you know, we, we need to squat and do things. And to stimulate those kind of, I call them the more of the developmental movements versus milestones. But this little guy already has that much more of a developmental chance just off of these five, ten minutes versus just a child just lying there. But again, in a hospital setting, the objective is to keep this child healthy, not where he's going to move and do long term. And. Uh, if you can bring the movements back to him as healthy as possible and stimulate that that, that got restricted for whatever reason um, really is doing his brain just so much good. Would any, well, I don't know, would anybody like to try or no, that's too much because of the So like, uh, you can still tie the baby with intubated babies, so we can give this motion to the babies. Yes. Because usually often we mm -hmm. sedate the baby and then we don't want that movement to occur. Right, so, right. So like if we can give this movement to the intuitive baby, I think it can help. Oh, I think it'd be wonderful. So can I hug you? Okay, so come here. I'm gonna, no, no, I'm going to take you. So this, so this would be a joey hole. So just feel the difference between lying with me. And now I'm going to just... Do you feel the difference of just that little bit? Do you see the difference of just what it does to, that's a pre-crawl. That's if a baby were healthy and lying, falling asleep on its belly getting tummy time. So I can come here, but again, I always do it with a light twist. See, I'm not doing left, right. That's a little different. 
doing? Just, see, that's a pre-nursing, just right there, how the head's coming over to me. So if you just the movement, and, and, and if you want to twist the other way. But stimulating that twist, it, it would be something very easy to just, in a sense, try on your infants for a week and just see if the vitals are better, the stability is better too, um, you know, shorter duration time in the hospital just to see if you, you have all the testing equipment here that you can get that response. Um, and I can, I can do that hug to all of you if you'd like to just feel how gentle, it's very gentle, you know, um, what, the, what the touch does. But again, if he was typical, he would be held, I would hand him to you. So his head, all of these things would be happening, these twists and turns. But because we need to keep him stable, they can't happen. So to three months later, expect the child to suddenly have these mobilities, you know, it's just so much to ask on the system. So as he starts growing proportionally, it just gets harder and harder for this child. If he's never twisted his head, how long is he gonna sit up as a baby? All of a sudden, you know, and then you have issues with CP or developmental delays or tone issues. But what it is are their movement issues. So anything to just, again, this, what did I do? A couple of minutes, even if that's all you do, a couple of times a day, it doesn't have to be an hour of therapy. It's a baby, you know? And uh, I think you, you'll see just such a big difference. And again, it could be a parent program that you send home with the parents to, to again, to stimulate the child. But also this will help the parent notice maybe three months from now, because that's the biggest complaint I have, especially with cerebral palsy, where the parent had no idea until the child was one year old. You've missed such a conversation with doctors. You've missed any kind of intervention. Um, you know, it just prolongs. Autism's not caught, usually diagnosed until the child's three. So if, if just, just doing this now, and you could say, doctor, why is my baby really stiff? And you, you'll see the patternings. Um, where babies do have more, quote, stiffness and uh, inflection starting to come. And uh, again, they should just be in a nice neutral patterning because uh, cerebral palsy still happens when they're sleeping as well as when they're awake. Obviously, some kids react more and more stimuli. So you can compare to how he is sleeping versus how he is awake. Thank you very much for your time. Does anybody have any questions? Or? <laughs> Thank you very much. Actually, this is very new to us, but uh, for us, we will be teaching them to nurse the baby. So I think it was when they nurse, they do have the stimulation. Right. Even if you don't know how to like uh, right. teach them about the movement, right. when they are being nursed, I think it's, uh, they are having some movements stimulated. Right. But it's very hard, as you notice, to nurse a stiff baby or if they have torticollis or issues that are coming in, that's when they start favoring one side because that's all the, the yeah. so if you can do a little bit of the head of time where the head's like, oh, I can go this way, I can go that way, and it, it, it's more comforting for the mother and then the, for the child to develop easier. So yes, now that we know that I think we could do much more to the babies as to like a prevent having CPs. So thank you very much. Thank you. We learned a lot today. <laughs> I can continue. I mean, like I, I, I can go into um, uh, if, if it's permissible. But yes. You know. uh, we have uh, two ventilated babies, so you can you please know. put it away. Yes, it's okay. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So in this situation, as you can see, she's actually a very strong little girl. She's moving quite a lot, considering. Usually after the surgeries, um, especially with all this this head, but you can see too the stress that she has on the head. Do you see how you know the strain through the eyes? Uh, if you notice that, it'll be much different in a baby that's healthier. So she's already presenting just from looking at her too many contractions through the head, you know, through the forehead, and that's okay. When I say something like that, I'm already working on changing it. Um, in a hospital setting, it's much more about diagnosing about what's wrong, 
What I'm looking for is not only what's wrong, but what can I do to change it? The good thing with her, though, is she's not in a diaper, because that would really restrict pelvic movement. Um, especially um, babies under five pounds, the diaper alone can weigh almost too much for it and restricts the pelvis movement. So, and again, you've got the pole socks and all of that. So that's, and she's been IV'd through the leg. So you can't keep switching the IVs every day to balance out through the brain. But also too, she's already now lying asymmetrically in the NICU. So this is now already setting up a conversation of the chest cavity, and uh, how she's going to present. Does that make sense, how the, the, just the legs alone? So in this case, now if, if you don't feel comfortable, I'm gonna go underneath the fabric. So it's the same thing. I'm going in and I'm just lightly lifting the pelvis. And that's giving her a bit of stimuli. And I'm gonna come underneath here now you guys can go right to skin to skin, I'm just... So, in this case, I can really feel the, the heaviness. She's much heavier on this side. Now most people would assume that's because her knees are coming over. And I'm gonna come right underneath the shoulder cavity. Just the width of my hand for her size might be enough before actually bringing in the movement. So I'm just going to see if just the width of my hand is enough to stimulate the shoulder. But I'm just going to do a light lift. Now as you can see, which I would have known anyway in this position, there's very little rotation through the chest. Again, it's also how she's presenting because the rotation of the legs here. So now, is it okay if I do skin to skin with her to touch her skin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, same thing. What I'm going to do for her. I'm just touching, but I'm touching still even very minor with the twist. just being touched for with love you know what I mean she's had a lot of surgery she's had a lot of procedures so just my touch is just slightly calming down her cardiac functions but I'm bringing my touch down around Very light lift. Again, she's a real fragile little thing. And now what I'm going to do is just see how she is with the foot. You really see this with older kids with CP, but you probably don't get to see the kids when they're older. The foot quality is very poor. It's because of all of this. They buy IV through the ankle. It's the best IV in the pole socks. So you'll see with the, the, the CP kids as they get older, they have a much narrower foot. And it's usually because, again, this, this just the stimuli, the wrap of the pole sock starts to narrow out and elongate the foot. Again, not in every case, but something to consider. So now she's a little baby. Do you see how she's, she's presenting the foot down versus up? Notice I'm totally supporting her system. I'm under her knees, I'm under... I don't want her to worry about her balance because again, she's too early coming out. And now I'm just gonna go back and see, did that make a difference? And then I'm gonna come back to this foot now. I don't know if you can 
can see it now. See how her pelvis is starting to move and the knees are coming up? Can you see how this is rensing? We have a 20 year old that can walk, but she's in this position. She's in a full 90 degree angle. Mm -hmm. See, I'm keeping the foot down, and just again, it's just a light lift. It's a very light stimuli. Now, in, in someone like this, maybe that's enough for right now. Do you know what I mean? And then, you know, maybe in a half hour from now, or an hour from later on today, that's where you're going to go to touch your head a little bit. Now, but you see the chest cavity is calmer. Does that make sense? I mean, she's still, I don't know what, what she's doing vitals before. <coughs> Same thing with her for fingers. A lot of people would just touch each finger. What I would do, same with the feet. I'm going to take her little wrist and a light twist. See how she's reacting, the strength she's getting? All of you, I want you to just look left and right. Just look with your heads left and right. On yourselves, look left and right. Now I want you to tighten your fists and look right and right and see if there's a difference. See the difference? Yeah. Just from the fist. But again, all my movements just have a twist. Now again, maybe it's not the time to do it that she's IV'd on this side. That would be up to the individual, but I think I'm gonna just briefly come over on this side, sorry. It's just easier with the ventilator to access the back of her neck. Sorry. So, so again, you just have to watch the, the rotation of the wrist. So maybe I would come down here from the, the wrist and just her elbow, just to stimulate. Because what happens is that IV weighs a lot. So if I'm here, right? Now today I decide I'm going to try and lift my arm. It doesn't happen. Her brain goes, well, this doesn't work. You know, I will try a different way to move my arm, but now it might be like this. And a much more forceful or whatever. And then this could get. switched over, can you please, now that the IV is off his hand, just work her wrist a little bit so she starts moving it again. We just be, okay, when a young boy, let's say, breaks his arm, eight months old, gets the cast off, they, you know how they still crawl like a monkey? 
before they know they can put their arm down again? It's the same kind of conversation, even more so because she has such limited room. <laughs> Any questions? Um, so when we have done something, like some procedures, we have to go through with the hand that is like, uh, if we have done, uh, sometimes because we are given IV, there is sometimes uh, inflammation. Correct. So that time we have to go slower than the other one. Right. right. But again, if you just touch a little bit beforehand, you know, to get to stimulate the area that you're going to go in and have, I mean, I know you have to IV or you're here to save her life, but if you can just add to the mobility a little bit first, okay. then going in with the IV, I think you might see a big difference, and then, then when she comes out, again, if you're in a hurry, that's something you can, again, direct, like if this comes out, Mom, we've just taken this out, can you please just, just touch her wrist and make sure, let her know it's okay, and it can move again. Okay. Any other questions? And if anybody would want, want me to touch them so you can feel it, feel, feel by all means. with the wrist. So, so just notice your wrist here. So if I were to just raise up and down, right? Feel the difference between that and then if I were to twist. Feel the difference? See how the pelvis is moving under that? If I just go like this, I'm not going to get moving through the feet. And that's all I'm looking to introduce with the, with the babies. So when they go to reach for call, you know that that movement is there later on. Yeah, you can play on each other. <laughs>